Hi there, Michelle with Crafty Servings. So we're gonna make some spring chickens today. They're going to be bright and springy. You've seen all different versions of the fabric chickens on Pinterest or other places. So I'm gonna do my version. It's gonna be sort of similar. We're gonna add maybe a twist or two on it, but it's gonna be cute. So I'm gonna do two of them. I'm gonna do one that's a little bit rustic that we're going to be stamping on the fabric and making that sort of cute and we're going to do a bright and springy teal one and then i'll show you one that i did before so all right we'll wait till a few more get on and then i'll show you that kit because i only show it one time i think during here all right so i did cut out just some of my own patterns they were so easy to do honestly i'll show you how i cut it well honestly it looks like a heart doesn't it I'll show you how I did it. So I took a pencil, and you can probably see see my line. No, I don't know if you can see my line or not. I literally just drew one, maybe a half of a egg shape, folded it in half and cut it. That's literally all I did. And you got this. And you're going to end up cutting two of these for fabric. Thank you, Kathy, for passing me on. Good morning, Karma. All right. So, again, just traced it out a half a one, folded the paper in half, and then you get a perfect one. They don't have to be perfect, but all right. I also cut out, I just drew it again. I didn't even draw it. I just honestly just cut it out. This is going to be for wings just cut out that i drew a little bit you can see my markings um that is going to be for the comb now i didn't do um a shape for what are those things that hang down i know you know what they are and then i just have just something simple this is going to be for the feet so we're going to add some cute little feet uh oh cash is home and he got a haircut <laughs> so He's no longer the furry hot bees. Hello, baby. Hello. Hello. So, they're easy patterns. Honestly, they're just easy to draw out. <laughs> My chicken is falling. I did one earlier. Do you want to see it? I'll show you what it's going to look like, okay? I'll show you what it's going to look like. And then I'll show you cutting it, putting it together. So I just have him, this is my little bit here. We'll use this as a base so it's not so messy. We'll use this as a base. Is he cute? So you've seen some like this, you know, we just had to make sure we add the button. We added some legs. I'm going to be making this one a little different. I'm going to be adding some Juden in here, but he's going to be adorable. He's going to be adorable. So we're going to do bright and we're going to do a little bit rustic. That's what we're doing. All right. Let me just get this. Now it's easiest if you have pins. Um, if you don't have pins, use double stick tape to hold the fabric together. But I mean, most of you have stick pins. All right. We're going to cut out two of these. Thanks, Sharon. Thanks, Kathy. I need a black and white to look like my Lucy. See? So on this one, we are doing, um, like I said, we're going to stamp on this fabric. I've done that many times. I stamp on fabric. I stamp on wood. Um, stamping isn't just for paper. All right, and we're going to do, this is the wings we're gonna do. We actually need four wings, but let's just do two at a time.
All right, so we got that. We got the wings. We're done with them. We're going to, so for the bright one, now I'm just using felt. And this isn't a very thick felt. Um, you could use a little thicker, but it works. This is just the cheap felt you get probably at Walmart. You can get it anywhere, really. And this is the comb for the, for the head. So I'm using the red for here. You can even just do a heart shape or something. That would be cute. You wouldn't have to do. Um, you wouldn't have to do um, like and a shape like that. Even a heart would work. Now you also need. You guys tell me this all the time. What are those things that hang down? <laughs> I always forget. So I'm doing two of them. I think I need a little smaller. We're doing two of them. I know she'll have awesome pictures in there for in that barn. You have two ducks now? That's cute. All right, let's go ahead and get started. So this one, let's we're going to get this one stamped right away. We're going to do front and back. It's easy and we're going to make it look a little bit aged because I'm using these stamps. These are called background elements. So you can use these on cards. They're always so fun. Um, yeah, Debbie, and I know that I can't wait to go see. She, they did have an open house and I didn't make it there, um, but I will make it there and go and see. Thank you, Marjorie, for passing me on. All right, so I think we're going to use, we're going to do a couple of these. And I'm just using mocha. I use this one all the time. The ink on and... Out of the way now. Keep clearing my room here. All right, we're gonna start putting it together. Now you can glue it. I like the look of stitching. I just want to match these up, make sure, because it's probably a little bit different from front to back. Because when I cut, when I drew it, I just drew it. It's not even on one side or the other, so that's why I want to make sure they match up. So those are the wings on there. Those are the wings on there. All right. These are going to make cute chickens. Okay. Let me just think. Okay, to, to put it together now, this one we're going to have, oh, we're going to do the wings first. We're going to sew the wings first. And honestly, like I said, you could, um, you could use the glue if you want, but I like this extra little stitching that I think we're going to just use this light one. It's going to, this is what's going to make it look a little bit more country, a little rustic. And we're going to get our pins back out just to hold it together. Yeah, 
You could also do, if you glue it, you could also do your stitch lines around it. That would be really cute. That would work just fine also with a permanent marker. All right, I have a wide enough needle so I can get this in here. All right, and I just knot off one end. And now we have to leave the bottom sort of open just because we have to make sure we um, have room to stuff it. But I'm going to start between the two layers. I'm just going to put the needle up in between the two layers because I've got that knot at the bottom and that way that will hide that knot. The knot will probably be hidden anyhow when you put it inside of here, but just in case. And all I'm going to do is just do a running stitch down and up and down and up. All the way around that's why it, just, it does go fast you can do um, I think it's called a buttonhole stitch where it goes all the way like around the outside of it um, you can certainly do that you know whatever you want to do some pattern for these Marjorie I guess I didn't plan it I could take a picture of them um, and just put out there that you can, um, I could post a picture of them. So honestly, like I said, I hand drew this pattern, this shape, and then I folded the paper in half and cut it. So that's how I got that. Um, same with these, they're, they're nothing hard, but I can take a picture of those and just post them. Now you don't want to gather this. If you pull too hard on the stitching, it'll gather this whole thing together. You don't want to do that. I do plan on doing that though at the bottom of these chickens. You're welcome, Marjorie. Yeah, I do plan on doing it at the bottom of the chickens. With it, the, the stitching is just a quick and easy stitch. You're just doing up and down through both layers. And here comes the rain. All right, so I am going to get the stuffing out right away too to get that in there before we we finish. So you can see that I to me that stitching adds a little bit extra to it. Um, we're just going to use a little fiber fill. Get that in there, and again, this is going to be sewn inside of this seam so you're not going to see this bottom part you know it, it doesn't have to be perfect closing it up either it's just I'm just going to punch that up into those corners so it didn't take much much of that just finish closing her up So like I said, I think I am going to do both of these. If you don't mind, I'm going to do both so you can see the bright and colorful. I'm just going to knot this off on the bottom. You're not going to see that because it'll be sewn inside of the chicken. But I'll do the bright and colorful and this one if you don't mind.
I'm putting them up like that because I don't want to stitch it shut down there because of course we got to fill it and then what I'm going to do is a separate little gathering stitch down there to gather that bottom part together. So let's do that on here too so I don't forget and stitch the whole thing before I stuff it. Get a book in, get a bodkin. Even if it's skinny fat, even if it's a skinny tube, that's where I struggle. I have like a long embroidery hook that I do sometimes too. And I do have, I do have like almost like this long needle thing. I mean, I've tried multiple things. All right, this one, we were using this brown thread somewhere. So we're using the red thread. Here's our brown thread. just not letting you alone. Put rice or beans. Yes, you could do that too. Rice or beans in here. Yes, absolutely you could. That would be cute too. I'm just going to use a little stuffing. Okay. All right, so starting at the bottom, just to hide that knot again, I'm just starting on the inside between the two layers and putting that back, pulling that up in there. And just the running stitch all the way around. And when you get up to the wings and the comb, you do have to make sure that you are catching those in this layer. Um, rice or beans that would be really really cute on here too okay. I'm just trying to catch those stitches inside of there so when I bring it through I just put the needle right through and that creates that knot so it's knotted it's not going to gather anymore I can leave this together because then I'll show you um, how we're going to gather that bottom we have here of Artesia acrylic paint box of 60. No, I haven't, Debbie. I have not. You don't need a lot of the fill either in here. You don't have to overstuff it. Just add some to be cute. That's going to be enough. You want to get it over like in the corners, and the little rounded corners and the top. It's cute, cute, cute. Just a little more. You could use scrap material or plastic bags. Yep, there are so many different things. Absolutely, you could. Those are good ideas too. All right, so um, now what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep it open like this because I want to be able to gather this and make it sort of rounded on the bottom. So instead of going all the way around like I did, I'm not going to go across. I'm going to start, um, you know what, actually I am going to take that off. I'm going to cut that off because I knotted it already. 
I'm going to put a knot on here just so I don't pull it through by accident, but you wouldn't necessarily have to knot that side either. So now I'm going to do that same running stitch, but I'm going to do it on the inside here and just on one side, and then I'm going to bring it all the way around onto the other side. And this is going to be what we're going to use to gather it. I said, don't you don't pull this one all the way in because we're going to be pulling both ends to gather it all the way around. Just looking at my battery on my phone too. I should have enough. I thought I would. All right, and then I'm going to bring it right onto this other side. And continue around. We're making cute little chickens. This is a stamped one and I also have a bright colored one here that that I'm making also. So I'm showing you a bright one and I'm showing this more of the farmhouse kind of rustic look. I think this will be my favorite. I like bright. I like the bright, but I like the rustic kind of farmhousey look. So that's where I do. Okay, so now I'm going to take my needle off of here. I won't need that color anymore. And all you're going to do is pull these two threads and pull them together, and it just creates that gather. And then you can tie that off. I did make the patterns. They were real easy. I'll show you again. Just it was just I just drew on a piece of paper. I drew this shape on a piece of paper. And I knew I would not be able to draw it on the other side to make it even. So all I did was take the paper and fold it in half. And that's how I got that. Same with the wings. I just I just drew it. Um, so I did say that maybe when I post a picture of these, I'll post a, just a screenshot of the pattern and you could maybe save it down as a, um, as a picture. So, you know, for this rustic one, you honestly... I don't know, this would be more of like your rustic or primitive. You wouldn't have to put eyes or beak or anything on. You could, which I'm going to, but you wouldn't necessarily have to. All right, so we got that. And I do have to cut the eyes and the beak yet. So what I'm gonna do is finish this one off on here. If you want to stick around after, I'll do the random act of kindness after we're done doing this one. If you want to stick around after and I finish the bright one, you certainly can. That way, if you want to hop off, you can. All right, so for the eyes on this one, I think that's too close to the color. Let's, I'm going to use this as a background for the eyes. This will be the white part of the eyes. On that one, I'm going to do bright white. I've just got to fold it together so that I get it even. I'm going to do two of them at the same time, and I'm just going to do a big oval. So again, no pattern. Just cut it around. If you feel more comfortable having a pattern, then just go out on Microsoft Word or something like that, or your computer. This is almost too big though, I think. Yeah. Um, and just insert a shape and insert an oval shape. A little too big. Okay, I think that's better. We gotta make them a little goofy looking. All right, so we got that. Um, we need, let's do brown for the pupils. Did you hear that loud sigh? That wasn't Larry, that was Cash. He 
you love chickens awesome all right in this i'm just cutting two smaller circles i have it folded together so that i get the same size and for the web feet on this one we're going to cut two of these now this one i drew out two and i just i mean honestly it's not much of a shape And I'm doing two of them, and I'll show you how we how uh, we put the feet on. Okay, so we need now. I've got this real thick jute. We're going to use this for the legs, and so that's the top. Just going to do a little pinch pinch in the back and just do a little clip there now you have to make it a little bit bigger because that it depending on the size of the string you use that's got to fit in there and then I'll tie a knot on the bottom Stand. Just tie it nice and tight. And then let's see, we're probably going to do it about this long. You can do these legs as long as you want. So I also have some of these wood beads. I'm not sure the size of them. I'm not sure the size. We're just going to add one of them onto here. You could do the whole leg in them if you want, but we're just going to do that. So we're going to make two of these now. Oh, awesome. I'm glad you're going to try that. It's just, it's honestly really simple and just cute. I'd love to see your take on it. Right. And just tie this knot again. I like this thicker jute for this just because you see it then. Um, but if you have thinner or you have other kind of string, you know, use, use whatever you have. Use yarn. That. And another one of these beads. Thank you, Gabby. I'm glad, Diane. I hope you all make some of the stuff that I show you. Right. See, that's just cute little feet. My cute little feet. All right, so we got the feet ready. We got these eyes. Um, oh, we need a beak. We just use one of these scraps. We need a beak. A triangle beak. And I got the wattles cut. So I think we're ready to put it together. We're going to get out some. Okay, let's take. We're going to. Our going to take another piece of this if we have to trim it down we will hello Mary how are you doing Margaret I hand you a pattern I drew a shape like this and I folded the paper in half and cut it open but I did say when I post like I don't have a pattern like for the eyes that I just eyeballed the eyeballed the eyes um, the beak I just cut the web feed I do have that here that when I post a picture of these I can post a picture of the shapes too that I did 
Diane, thank you so much for the stars. So I'm just taking my jute apart. We're going to just add a little bit of texture in on the bottom. Do one more. And we're going to have some raffia in there too. I like untwisting. If you ha if you haven't followed me for a long time, um, most of the time when I use jute, I untwist it, and you get these little curly tendrils. They get even more curly. Uh, you know, some of the smaller jute um, is really curly. All right, so we got that. Let's grab some raffia up here. If you have straw, use straw. So look at it. I mean, I probably have some in my stash from fall, but I'm just going to make this a messy. Gather that in. Just took all those ends in. Let's put some of this jute in here in different places. And now just take a skinny piece of jute here and tie it all together. You're hanging in there. Oh gosh, Mary. Yeah, I'm sorry for your loss. Pets really are part of the family. Okay. I'm just tying that. And I just added the jute just to add a little bit of extra texture in there and really make this messy. Put her together or him. Hello, Linda. All right, we're just going to add the eyeball. Just using regular old hot glue here. Oops. The waddle is going to go under the beak, so I think we're going to do that off of here too. I had no idea what these really look like, so. Dab a glue in here. This is the waddle. I don't know if it's supposed to be closer together. I don't know. And then we're going to put the beak right on top of there. And it hides where those two join together. You're welcome, Mary. I'm glad you got it. I'm glad you like it. All right, let's just put these, let's see. We're gonna put this on first and then the eyes can go, then I can judge the eyes. Now, if you want just little tiny bead eyes, you could do that too. I'm making it look sort of goofy with these eyeballs. Not the way she boy and carry Tim Holtz collage paper. Um, they might, 
they might they might dip. I know they have some Tim Holtz products. Thank you, Sharon. Like I said, I'll stick on and do the teal one, finish that if people want to stick on. I just thought I would do this so that people can see. And you can even rough up these edges some too if you want. You can go and pull strings and rough up the edges. All right, the feet we're going to have hanging down like that. So we'll just put a little line of glue. No, this isn't a kit, Liz. You can just you can just make it. The pattern, what I said I would do is when I post pictures of these chickens, I'll just post a picture of what I drew. I said I drew a half of an egg and then I cut, folded it in half and cut it. That made sure it was even. I just drew that for the wings. So it was pretty easy drawing. Um, this was the waddle. I just sort of traced, just drew that out. Um, so I could put a picture of that when I post this. So yeah, I didn't have a pattern. I just drew it. All right. Put them on there. Leave them up there for now. Okay, and then we're going to put this on here. Okay, and again, I want that messy. I want that spread out. And when I glue it on, I'll make sure that I spread that out as I'm doing it. Um, Spread that so that it gets in that glue. Measurements, I can tell you that in just a moment. I have a ruler right here. Um, I have a ruler right here. So honestly, yeah, if you start with a triangle and just do cur um, round the corners, that would work too. So I'll tell you what measurements in just a moment. Okay, and then you turn the feet the, the right way. Just turn your fabric. Okay, now we need a button. We need a button. Button, button, where's the button? This one I think I'm going to use a little bit darker button. You could use like the same color as the raffia, but um, This one, this button will match perfectly with it. So I just want to see where I'm going to put it. I could put it up by the comb, but I think I like it down on the bottom down here. We're going to put it on the bottom. Oh, Margaret, I'm sorry for your loss on your kitty, too. Put that there. This button matches perfectly with this. All right, let's just trim out some of this. This is the one I tied with. Isn't he cute? So you just put them on, put them on something like that. He's adorable. I love him. This 
one. Yeah, put that in the note. You know what? If we add more glue back here, get this glued on, that'll give us a base. Thank you. Okay, that gives us more of a base. Okay, we got that one. Make sure that the feet are turned the way I want them. This was the one I did my practice one on. And then this is the stamped one that I did. Maybe we only have room for one. Oh, I know, we'll do this and this. And this. How's that? 